I really like my Emax Tiny Hawk Racing Whoop. It's a great FPV Whoop racer, and I've had a lot of fun with it. There's just one thing I'd like to improve on it, and that's the choppy video feed. Luckily, the Tiny Hawk has been around for a little while, and there's lots of feedback from pilots on RC groups. I tried some of the early modifications that were suggested, such as bringing out the video antenna, removing the heat shrink from the antenna, or adding capacitors to the 5 volts or 3.3 volts. Actually, my Tiny Hawk had one of the newer revision boards that already had the capacitors added, so I knew it wasn't the cause of the choppy video. After reading some of the comments on RC Groups, it became evident to me that the best approach was to replace the video transmitter. There was a link from RC Groups to a video by Racing in SC, which showed how to replace the VTX with one from Eachine called the VTX03. I decided to do the same, but as one of the commenters suggested, it's better to use the VTX03S, which has smart audio. Just as the stock VTX, the VTX03S allows you to use the radio sticks to control the menus of the VTX to change the frequency and the band. This is handy because the button on the new VTX is not accessible once it's installed inside the Tiny Hawk. The VTX03S also has four power levels that can be controlled through the smart audio stick menus. The stock VTX only has 25 milliwatts selectable, whereas the new VTX is switchable between 25, 50, 100, and 200 milliwatts. Here is the size comparison between the stock VTX and the Eachine VTX03S. And remember, the S stands for smart audio. Okay, enough with the talk. Let's get into the install explanation. After removing the flight controller board from the Tiny Hawk, I heat up the two pins on each side of the VTX with a soldering iron and pry it up with a tongue depressor while the solder is still hot. I remove the other side of the VTX the same way with a soldering iron and prying with a tongue depressor. Here's what the stock VTX looks like once it's removed. Next, I remove the top layer of plastic on the standoff so that more of the standoff is exposed. This allows for easy soldering later on. The pin should look like this once you remove the top layer of plastic on the standoff. It's easy to use a pair of cutters to snip away the top layer of plastic. Similar to the video on YouTube, I put a heat shrink around the VTX and also some heat shrink around the antenna connector as you see here. The wires coming out of the VTX-03S are a little different than the VTX-03. And of course there's the smart audio wire. I'll probably tie off the extra red and black wire to the camera and not use them at all. I'm going to use some double-sided tape to mount the new VTX to the main board, but I'm not going to place it right in the center. I will offset it a little bit to the right so that the antenna mount is not over where the grommet and the standoff would go for the case. So I just finished the soldering and you can see the yellow wire, which is the video wire, on the right. Then next is the smart audio green wire and then over on the left we have the ground wire which is black and the far left you can see the 5 volts which is a red wire. I didn't use these two wires which I'll probably tie off. They went to the camera and I don't need those. Okay now I've got a battery plugged in and I'm just going to give it a little test. You can see on the display that I have the fat shark band which is F and a frequency of 5 and the power level is 4. Now I'm going to test it with the goggles and you see how it looks. I think it seems to be working pretty good. The picture looks clean and I don't see any problems although the goggles are very close to the transmitter. Okay so the Tiny Hawk is all back together now and I use some of this 3M double-sided tape to hold the board down to the main board. Surprisingly enough, I didn't have to cut out any of the case to fit the new transmitter into the Tiny Hawk. I also didn't put any heat shrink or hot melt to stiffen up the antenna, but I think it's going to be okay. We'll give it a try. So I'm pretty happy with the install. The Tiny Hawk looks pretty normal, almost like I didn't do anything to it at all.
So now let's take it for a test. And here's the comparison between the stock VTX on the left and the Eosheen VTX 03S on the right. I have them both set to 25 milliwatts. The stock VTX looks like it's on power level 4 in the upper right hand corner there, but it's actually not. It only has 25 milliwatts. That's all it can do. And the Eosheen, of course, is on power level 1 up in its upper right hand corner for 25 milliwatts on both of them. I think the Eosheen performs very well and I'm I'm happy with it I'm glad I switched over now I'm using dominator goggles and they have a true D diversity receiver in them so I have a patch and a regular dipole antenna still I'm getting reflections off the wall so both of them are having trouble with the reflections and multipathing but the Eosheen does so much better now in the next clip I'm going to move the Eosheen up to 50 milliwatts. So now it's on power level 2 on the right and you can see how it performs on 50 milliwatts. Anything above 50 like 100 or 200 took too much current away from the flight controller and causes problems like the motors pulsing and such. So there it is. So if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell notification icon so that you get more content in the future because I'll probably do some more videos on mini quads and flight controllers, VTXs and such. So we'll see you later. Have a good week.